Facebook at the moment whilst I'm recording this. Completed the uh, dovetails as you can see. I have remembered to start the clock again. I've got my legs. Now I'm going to lay out for the dovetails on the rails. Let's see if we can get them in the right order again. We've got that leg and that leg, like so. That right. That's it. They'll be separated by a rail in here. And leaving them full section like this has made it very awkward to stand them up. But, you know, why not make something tricky if you can? distance apart wants to be the top of this with a gap in the middle. I'm going for about an inch apart. This is probably where everything falls on the floor. About that sort of spacing. Now this is where I'm beginning to think I wish I'd planned what I was going to be doing. I wish I'd got some drawings and uh, it would be so much easier. I do find it quite fun to uh, actually build something on the fly like this, designing as I go along. But it can throw up some problems and when I'm actually challenging myself to get it done in a certain amount of time it did seem a bit stupid. <laughs> One of the things I was trying to do was avoid uh, having holes showing on the uh, on the rails at the end, seeing if I could cut around them for the dovetails. Quite the stretch, so this one needs to be copied. Now that's a great example of where drawings would have been a great idea. I've just said I need to uh, copy the rail uh, for the both the back and the front but actually because the back legs are a different profile to the front legs I go ahead and copy it and I've made a mistake so I have to correct that later Slight design change happening now. Uh, I think we'll leave that square at the top. That didn't sound too confident, did it? Am I really sure? I seem to be pondering it for quite a long time, don't I? Thinking about it, still thinking, still thinking, tapping a finger. Yep, we'll leave it square at the top. Should have thought about that beforehand. Uh, let's have that there. And once again, we need an identical one. So that's very handy. This is the mistake I mentioned earlier. And I still haven't cottoned on. Got holes in, in this one. 
it's a shame, but um, that's the way it goes. This blank's quite a bit better. So let's have that side up, that side against the work. It still hasn't dawned on me, and here I go marking it all in. interesting to watch. At least I'm having a lot of fun doing it. If you're not enjoying watching it, well, we'll speed things up in a minute. There'll be a bit of saw action. Well, hopefully you'll like that. That's not rubbish, that's rubbish. So we're soaring again. Fantastic. So I'm taking a very careful look here. Surely it's going to dawn on me and I'm not going to saw it in the wrong place. Surely. Oh, oh dear, he's putting it in the vise. Oops, it's not looking good. I see what a mess the, the workshop's in at the moment. Ignore the state of the workshop, just think about the mistake you're about to make. Although this dark timber all came from the same source, the back legs and these uh, two rails uh, can't be Moranti, they're far too dense and too hard. But uh, for the moment I can't identify exactly what it is.
All right, time for a little break. Okay, so let's get going again. Clear up some of this rubbish. Okay, so finish with those for a moment. I think we can mark out now for the, the housings for these dovetails. Let's start at the back end. So we've got, I really should have marked these, it would have helped a great deal. That's the back end. So that wants to receive. This Haha, <laughs> I wish I could see my face now as it dawns on me the mistake that I made earlier. Ah, oh, interesting. The back legs of course are not as wide as the front legs, so that's kind of screwed us up. Okay, but never mind. That can go on there. Now I turn the volume right up trying to hear myself think, but uh, I just seem to be standing there doing nothing at all. But obviously some sort of processing is going on. Eventually I'm going to realise what I've got to do. Take another look over there maybe. Is that going to help? Not sure. Probably be tapping my finger again in a minute. That normally happens when I'm pondering a, a difficult problem. There we go, bit of finger tap. Oh, silly sausage, well, that's wasted a bit of time. We need to remark those. Let's flip that over. That way. That served me right for trying to build something on the fly. Well, there's a minute or so of speeded up uh, action here. Let's take a moment to talk about the new format. Um, it is purely for some project builds. Uh, that's my idea anyway. And reaction so far has been uh, it's been mixed. The comments have been either good or uh, with constructive criticism, but there have been some thumbs down. I really like to hear from those people who have put thumbs down what it is you don't like about it, because it might be something simple that I can fix. Either way, let me know what your feelings are. Uh, certainly I think it's nice to see the whole process and it's something that's lacking a lot on YouTube. So tell me what you think.
So let's try again. We have left rear leg, right rear leg, rear stretcher wants to be on the outside. So let's flip those over. So, so it's been a bit sensible. Well, let's use a guide block and a clamp. By clamping the pieces together I can be a lot more accurate when it comes to knifing the actual joint line. In this particular case uh, ideally the bevel would be on the other side of the knife but you'll see I'm just leaning the knife so that the bevel actually rides flat against the, uh, the dovetail. Now I'm just setting up for the uh, the other end of the joint. Let's go in for a closer look at uh, what I'm doing. It's important to use the I called it a guide block earlier. I think it's just a, a squared batten of timber. If I uh, clamp that tightly to the the line or the edge of the joint, I can then clamp the block also to the the piece it's joining onto. Um, and that holds everything in place whilst I use the knife to mark the joint line. Much better than just holding everything together uh, with your hands whilst also trying to knife it. Let's give that a strop. Just notice here how it only takes 10 seconds for me to uh, strop the edge and bring it back to good performance. Although this is just a simple Sawyer's bench, every single leg is different, so it has to be marked up differently, and it's just worth taking uh, the time to do that correctly. This really is where having uh, some plans on paper would be most helpful.
They're all done. Um, I think I might do those first, then go on to the stretchers. So we're going to saw as much of these off as we can. Right, I think we can saw all of them off. Here's a good lesson for everyone, including myself. Take a little bit more time and, and care when sawing to the line, and you won't need to make adjustments later by pairing with a chisel. And it really does take a lot longer if you get that wrong in the first place. Seeing as how the camera battery dies any moment now, we'll call that it for this instalment. I've racked up three and a half hours of unplugged with working so far. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Cheerio!